So it was, I never made a dime with Suge. I, I never made one penny with him. Nothing. And so when he did his thing, they went to the pinnacle. I, I was on the set with Pac in gridlock. Then uh, Suge brought on uh, Reggie Wright Jr. as his security. And the police came in the Nation of Islam. We got out. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. I got to ask you about that jacket you got on, Death Row. Uh, I love it. Love the, love the fact that you got it on. But you go so far back with 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 Suge and, and just the, the interactions that you guys had when that, when that whole thing was on, a, you know, was on the rise. That campaign was going. There was a lot of money involved. It was a lot. They needed security and all kind of stuff. Um, how did you end up linking with Suge Knight? I'm... What, Actually, when I first got out of prison, uh, we were over in Luther's Park, and Suge and, and Joel Lim came with the idea. And he was like, man, you ain't banging, get out the park. And he said, man, I'm trying to start Death Row. I just left San Quentin, and it sounded like, whoa, that sound hell of a to me, right? So they started their little campaign. They got, uh, I was in Ironwood in 1994. I hear Death Row is popping. I get out, and I see dudes as ex-crackheads, they all got death row chains on and Acura legends and doing this and that, like, man, come on, get with the row. But I've never gone along to get along. So it was, I never made a dime with Suge. I, I never made one penny with him. Nothing. And so when he did his thing, they went to the pinnacle. I, I was on the set with Pac in gridlock. Then, uh, Suge brought on uh, Reggie Wright Jr. as his security, and the police came in the Nation of Islam, we got out. And it went on, and the untimely demise and everything started going down. By 1999, Death Row was finished. So Suge started going through his heartbreaks, getting these bad deals, and not knowing how to replenish himself. So now that Snoop has bought the le bought the name Death Row. Correct. That's why I wanted to. So mm -hmm. I feel it's a a testimony to Compton. I mean, we was the biggest biggest record corporation on the West Coast. Death Row Records, out of straight out of Compton. Only thing bigger than that was NWA, but they never had the money. Death Row had. It went to 147 million dollars. Known all over the world. This some of the most powerful music. And they say a money and fool soon part. part yeah, no, you exactly right. <laughs> you um, know, so people are like, man, why are you rocking Death Row? Well, because it's Compton. You can't say Death Row without saying Compton. A dude was asking me the other day about one of the little homies, he got political on me and was talking about the Nation of Islam and how the Nation of Islam had Malcolm X killed. Right? And I said, well, bro, first of all, you have incorrect information. But I would like to let ask you this. Do you know Malik El Haj Shabazz? He said, no, who is that? I said, when Malcolm left the Nation of Islam, he became Malik El Haj Shabazz. He wasn't Malcolm X anymore. But the only way that you know anything about Malcolm X, he has to go with the Nation of Islam, huh? You have no edifice of Malcolm X today. No Malcolm X foundations. No, no they don't have Malik El Haj Shabazz Boulevard in New York. They got Malcolm X Boulevard. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad gave them that 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 lane. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101.